Hey everyone, did you know that inside today's NHL puck, there's circuit boards and 12 LED lights? There's a lot of tech in today's game that some fans just don't know about. And I'm going to show you what's inside one of these things and reveal a major overhaul in the game's most essential object, the hockey puck. Want to see what's inside? Well, come on, I'll show you on this episode of Rinks Around the League. For pretty much my whole life, I've been involved in hockey. From minor and junior hockey, officiating, heck, I even drove a Zamboni and made ice for a few years. And I still play the game to this day. I worked video production for Hockey Canada for a few years, including the 2010 Vancouver Olympics, and then was manager of video production for the Edmonton Oilers for five seasons. When I helped document the construction of Rogers Place in Edmonton, I developed a fascination on how these buildings come together. I visited 34 NHL rinks, and after my time in the NHL, I decided to start this YouTube channel to share with you all that I've learned about them. Who knows, you may just learn something new before you head to your next hockey game. I'm Jeff Nash, and this is Rinks Around the League. Hey everyone, welcome back to Rinks Around the League. When you think of hockey, you may think about the NHL. You may think of minor hockey. You may imagine playing the game outdoors with your friends. And to play the game, the bare minimum of the things that you need is a stick and a puck. Now over the last few decades, huge advancements have taken place with sticks and skates. And it's only recently that the old six ounce piece of rubber has seen a major upgrade. I've been wanting to make this episode for a long time, but had to wait to get my hands on an actual game used puck. And on this episode, we're gonna show you some x-rays and even open up one of these to see what's inside. But before we do, just a little background on the actual puck itself. Back in the beginning of hockey, they were made out of either wood or rubber. It's rumored that they would take a rubber ball and shave it down so it was flat, and that made it easier to slide along the ice surface. Apparently old lacrosse balls were sliced down and were a little square at the beginning. The current NHL puck was designed by Art Ross in 1940. And little fun fact, the NHL regards February 7th as the puck's birthday. Hockey fans like myself will of course remember the rocket puck Fox Sports designed and tested out in the mid 90s. A glowing puck which turned into a red streak during slap shots on broadcasts in hopes to increase interest in the US wasn't very popular with traditional fans. During the 1995-1996 NHL season, this slightly different puck was introduced. While the outside of the puck remained kind of the same, the inside and the effect was totally different. That year, the Fox Television Network obtained the rights to air the NHL All-Star Game and the Stanley Cup Playoff. Fox believed that to attract new viewers to the game, the network had to make the small looking puck on screen easier to follow on television. To that end, they developed an enhanced puck called the Fox Tracks Puck. It contained a computer board and battery and its center and 20 pinholes all over the puck. 12 along the edges, 4 on the top, and 4 on the bottom. Those would guide infrared emitters, each beeping approximately 30 pulses per minute. These emitters communicated with 16 sensoring devices placed around the rink and to follow the puck's movement. This experiment was short-lived as the television contract with Fox expired after the 98-99 NHL season, not to mention the cost to create the Halo puck. It was rumored to be around $400 to $500 per puck and the puck only had a battery life of about 20 minutes. Although only six ounces, the sheer velocity of these frozen chunks of rubber makes them very dangerous. If you only watch a handful of games, you'll inevitably see a player take a slap shot to the legs, body, or face. It's a very dangerous projectile. Sadly, it did contribute to the death of a fan, Brittany Cecil, during a Columbus Blue Jackets Calgary Flames game at Nationwide Arena in 2002. The following year, the NHL mandated the netting you see today, protecting the fans on the ends of the rinks from flying pucks. Always watch the play and always pay attention just in case a puck comes over that glass. Now, if you go to an NHL game today, they say they go through about 40 to 45 pucks a game. Sounds like a lot, right? But fans may not realize that every stoppage of play, every puck that gets shot over the glass, every goal that's scored, they replace with a new puck. All the stoppage of play, TV timeouts, they'll actually swap them out to keep them as cold as possible. In fact, when you go to your next NHL game, keep a close eye on the timekeeper's bench and those off-ice officials. They usually carry around a cooler full of pucks. They'll also keep tabs on the temperature of each puck to measure the effects of the ice temperature to the pucks themselves. If a puck does go over the glass into the crowd, the lucky fan who catches it gets a really cool souvenir to take home, especially today. And when a player scores a goal, the puck is usually labeled and either given to the player, if it's their first goal, or the team slash Hall of Fame, if it's a historic goal, or they wind up in your team's locker room sale for fans to purchase. Now there's three companies that work together to create the current pucks. Quebec-based Susie Baron produces the rubber shells. 
in Glasgow does the silkscreen labels and SMT Sports Media Technology produces the technology that gets placed into the shelves. The technology doesn't stop there. There's also some cool stuff that happens on the surface of the puck. In order for the officials to know whether the puck is cold enough, the NHL has applied a logo with thermodynamic changing ink. I think it was the Coors Light can that introduced the certified cold on their beer cans to tell you when your beer was at the optimal temperature to enjoy. Basically the same thing. When it's reached its optimal temperature, the ink on the logo will turn purple. If you're lucky enough to catch one of these during a game, throw it into your freezer when you get home and you'll actually see the ink change color. The ideal temperature of an NHL puck is between minus seven and minus 10 degrees Celsius. This hardens the rubber of the puck and helps mitigate the bouncing and uncontrollable puck during play. Now, there is a difference between the pucks the players throw over the glass during warmups for fans. Those are official warm-up pucks <laughs> and not official game pucks. Now also pay close attention to the pucks that have the wording official game puck Nowadays, if it doesn't have that color changing ink or these LED lights, chances are it's not actually a game puck. Let's get back to the lights and how this technology works. The lights blink at 60 frames per second and between 60 and 30 cameras are mounted in the roof of the arena to track the puck using infrared tracking to triangulate the position, speed of the puck as part of the puck and player tracking technology that was introduced over the last few years. Now, if you own kind of a VR gaming system, it kind of works on the same principle. Cameras mounted on the front of the VR unit uses similar technology to track the motion of the controllers you use to play the game. Now for officials to activate the puck, all they have to do is smack it really hard and it'll activate the battery inside. The battery inside will eventually run out four to six hours later. How the system actually keeps track of which puck is active, etc. I'm not sure, but SMT, if you're ever in Edmonton again, I'd love to chat. <laughs> Lead up testing for this technology was conducted during the 2015 NHL All-Star Game and the 2016 World Cup of Hockey and the 2018 NHL All-Star Game. A lot of testing needed to be done to make sure the technology and the battery would survive freezing temperatures and 100 mile per hour slap shots. The current version of this technology made its debut at the 2019 NHL All-Star Game and was implemented league-wide during the 2019-2020 NHL season. This technology has had many versions over the years and is still an evolving thing. In January of 2021, the NHL temporarily stopped using the pucks because of complaints about their performance. Now, according to the Boston Globe, each puck costs $40 to manufacture, and according to Susie Barron, they produce three to 400,000 pucks a year. If you wanted your own, you can get lucky and catch it at a game, or you can head over to eBay, just regular season pucks now are selling close to $290, $300 US. Now, according to the Boston Globe, they cost around $40 to manufacture, but I've heard rumors that they are much more expensive than that, ranging up to $100 a piece. So not a, not a cheap piece of rubber anymore. <laughs>
what they do is they actually have two halves of the puck and they press them into a mold essentially and then they have a little cavity inside and actually uh, I did take some x-rays so here are the x-rays that I that I took I actually put it through a security machine and the nice security guards were able to uh, let me take some pictures of what it looked inside and what you can see inside is the LED circuitry the battery pack and the little computer boards the, to control the LED lights now the, the chip or computer boards inside these pucks isn't like a uh, fully processor I don't I wouldn't think it just basically is enough battery and enough uh, computing power to sync the lights inside these pucks with the sensors around the around the uh, arena so yeah you can you can kind of tell that there's a little cavity in inside and so I would assume because of the precise placement of the electronics inside the puck that the cavity has to be pretty much set and they put the circuitry and the light bulbs inside they sandwich the two together with some sort of adhesive or just pressure heat pressure I don't know and then they kind of tread the outside of the puck because um, these are all individually numbered if you get one of these um, you can tell it actually has a, a number on it so you can keep track of, uh, of each puck and um, etc so in any case what I what I thought I would do is kind of file away the edges and the side to kind of see if I can get it to reveal the um, the kind of the seam and then kind of cut along the seam itself and try to get try to get it as close to like two halves as, as possible and uh, hopefully it isn't just hopefully it's sitting in there and it's not like you know just kind of really really stuck in there really good so I'm hoping I can get to the seam of it uh, cut around the seam open it up and hopefully the circuit board and the lights will just kind of pop out if not uh, we may have to destroy the whole puck um, but for the interest of science and experimentation I it's worth it right so got a I got a file here so bear with me follow along we're gonna file away here and see what we find It's really hard to see if there is a. It's really hard to see if there's a seam. I think we do have a seam though. Right, right along there, I think. I think that's where our seam is. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's our, our seam. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna grab some of my tools here. Okay, I can see the hardware in its, inside it now. Yeah, there we go. So this is good, this is a lot of work to get in there. So what I've done is I scored, scored the seam that I've had with uh, just some X-Acto knives here. I, I've scored the seam that we were seeing before just with an X-Acto knife and I just kind of kept working away and trying to get deeper and deeper and deeper. And now I'm just trying to pry it apart with just some screwdrivers and just kind of working my way along the seam. I think there's comes some sort of bracket in there. Okay. All right, we're making Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, put a bracket in there. Okay. All right, we're making, oh yeah, here we go. Okay. Oh, would you look at that? Look at that. Okay. <laughs> All 
right, let's, uh, let's get this other half out. It's not what I was expecting, that's for sure. I thought we'd be able to see the LED lights, but you kind of don't. But you can see, you can see the holes are completely hollow now. So I got the lights out of there. I think that's kind of the tough part there. It's kind of cool to see it kind of a part like this. Um, it's more contained than I kind of was envisioning actually. Okay, so here, some of the nubs broke. One of the nubs broke inside the puck there. So that's kind of cool. So it's kind of a more self-contained unit than I thought. I was kind of anticipating it, uh, the, the, the wiring and the LED lights kind of separately. And you can actually see the actual, um, the actual wiring and stuff, but I wasn't too far off. I mean, I was kind of, kind of bang on, I think. Um, it's, it is a little different than I thought. Um, I thought that the casing inside would hold the wires and stuff, but I didn't actually know that the tracking unit itself would be in, in one unit entirely, right? So obviously, when they're manufacturing the pucks, I would think that the shells or the 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 inner casing, I guess, the inner the inner shells are kind of manufactured. They obviously get the the unit, pop it in. It doesn't look like it. Kind of there is definitely adhesive going on. Uh, many layers of adhesive that you can see going on here. So you can see kind of the multi layers of adhesive here. So there must be, I don't know, maybe they produce this, house the unit, and then um, add the rubber to the outside. Yeah, because there's definitely almost strips, almost rings you can kind of see here. You can, you can definitely see there's like rings here, several rings. So they must like house the unit, give the unit to whoever, and then they just kind of add rings of rubber to the outside and, and seal it that way. Whew. Well, there you have it. The inside of an NHL hockey puck. <laughs> uh, Took a lot of work to get into this thing not gonna lie um, probably could have uh, you know with the, the aid of like some power tools and stuff you could probably get through it a lot quicker than i did but uh yeah i think my my theory is is pretty pretty accurate they have you know they they manufacture the the light kind of pod i guess you can call it um they have this inner in inner casing that the pod goes into, and then they just sandwich it together with adhesive or pressure or whatever, melt it together, and then um, they actually add rubber to the outside of the, the inner casing puck. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. The uh, It was kind of a cool experiment to see what was inside these things, but it just goes to show um, how far the, the puck has come, the simple humble puck. Um, the six ounce piece of rubber has morphed into this um, infrared tracking uh, intelligent current day puck. So yeah, if you catch one of these in the game, you know, I've done the hard work for you. I've taken it apart so you can see what it's like inside one of these things. So you don't have to, <laughs> uh, but definitely throw it in the freezer. You'll definitely uh, find the color changing ink. That's, that's kind of a cool thing to, to see for yourself. But uh, in any case, if you want to follow me at underscore the rinks on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, as well as here on YouTube. If you like this content, and you want to see a little bit more, hit me up with a subscription, leave some comments down below. Thanks for watching everybody, and we'll see you next time.